the channel. My name is Riley Jimison. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. If you're a longtime subscriber, I appreciate you coming back. This week, I'm going to let you in on the biggest, best kept secret in herpetoculture. Carpet pythons. Because they're simply the best kept secret in herpetoculture. Why? Let's find out. Obviously, I'm a bit biased, but carpet pythons, to me, were best described by Jeremy Turgeon of Brassman Reptiles as the best kept secret in the reptile hobby, and I couldn't agree with that statement more. They're hands down my favorite group of pythons, or snakes, period. Uh, there's endless variety, multiple species, subspecies, and I thought I would just take a few minutes today to kind of show you why I feel so strongly that these are the best kept secret in the reptile hobby. So let's jump right in. When it comes to snakes and what I like in snakes, I like kind of a cool look to them. Sometimes stripes are my thing, but not in everything. I like animals that are active, curious, kind of figuring things out and that don't just sit there. But I don't want something that I have to chase around and keep from knocking stuff over in the room. I want an animal that's you know, manageable for me, just by myself, but not delicate and tiny necessarily. And these animals really fill that void perfectly. They're not too big, you know, on average, most of my snakes stay under seven feet long. Um, this right here is a, a four-year-old coastal carpet that is, well, I don't know, maybe five feet long. You know, not huge. She's not done growing by any means, but she's definitely manageable in size and should never be exceptionally long, huge. But I love that they have this perfect size and activity level that isn't unmanageable, but it is fun and engaging. So for me, the carpet pythons are the best in terms of having a snake to interact with, uh, something that's not too big and something that uh, is, is a lot of fun and not overwhelming. Let's look at some more. A lot of folks like being able to play with genetics. They like some color. And so you can get a lot of morphs in carpet pythons. This right here is my big albino Darwin. And, you know, this is a full grown adult. She's about five and a half years old. And uh, again, great size, great activity. But, you know, if you're not into some of the more earthy tones, you can get into some of these really pretty morphs. Darwins uh, have albinos. There are coastals that have albino uh, origin morphs uh, or mutation over in Australia. They don't exist in the U.S. here, but there's a lot of different color palette out there within these different species and subspecies you could play with. So this is just one example. So you've got perfect size, good activity level without being overwhelming, and now we're talking about a lot of different color and some variety. So uh, this is a, definitely a, an extreme color morph. Let's look at just some subtle mutations that maybe aren't so pronounced, but it are still a really great example of some of the additional variety within these So animals. speaking of color, without getting into crazy extremes or morphs, if you like red, then Centralian pythons or Morelia bradley might just be the snakes for you. They're typically very calm and gentle animals. Mine just have a tendency to be very food aggressive and uh, I didn't plan this well and I've got food thawing in here so that, you know, I'm trying to make sure this doesn't go poorly. But uh, red, fade into black. There you go. Really big angular head. That's another thing that I love about carpet pythons in the Morelia genus. So you get these big boofy heads. And Bradley are certainly known for having big old heads. So you've got awesome size, good activity levels, you got extreme color, some natural color variations, and uh, just a really big charismatic head with lots of cool features. It almost looks intimidating. A lot of muscle. This heat pits in there. Just a wonderful, wonderful group of animals. Let's look at some more because the variety doesn't stop there. We've looked at Coastals, we looked at Darwins, now we're looking at Bradley. I obviously don't have everything. The first animal we looked at was a Popwin, but I figure uh, if we're talking about beautiful colors, we can't talk about carpets and not talk about jungles. So let's take a look at some jungles. 
it just wouldn't be right to talk about carpets without these jungle carpets. Uh, if there's one carpet python that most people have seen and remember, it's these guys because of this striking black and yellow coloration. Now there's a lot of variation to that uh, in the color tone, tipping, striping, pattern, uh, quality, cleanliness. So much variation within jungles and a lot of selective breeding has been done. But uh, I think it's pretty easy to see why some people will remember these things. Now this is a big example. This girl's, you know, well over six feet, probably pushing seven, which is probably bigger than they need to be. But um, it's hard to beat a big, beautiful jungle. And this is not a morph. Although there is the term jungle in boas and a few other things, this is, you know, aside from the selective breeding, a naturally occurring animal. So, natural beauty. The final reason why carpet pythons are the best kept secrets in herpetoculture. Great activity levels, not boring, not too big, not too small, not overwhelming, crazy extreme morph beauty, lots of natural beauty, and then some selectively bred beauty, and just endless amounts of it. And what I'm showing you today is literally just a tip of the iceberg. There's so much variety out there, and these animals are the best. I mean, I'm biased, but... They certainly don't live up to a nasty reputation. I don't have anything close to 10 feet. I have endless variety. I need more. There's just no end to it. So I think we'll send you off with one more. Just one more. Because I like you. Alright, and combining some of the extreme morphs and colors and things together, putting it all in this wonderful package is the Super Zebra. It's a... Uh, a jungle carpet with the extreme colors that you would would love to see in morphs but in this wonderful naturally occurring sort of animal I mean zebra occurred naturally came over through Europe through the United States and uh, it exists and it's a beautiful animal and I mean I've already said it enough times you guys are probably already sick of hearing it but these are some of the best and I can't pick just one that's my favorite I have to have them all I don't have them all but I'll get more the world is uh, still kicking we can still get carpets only pop ones are importable but there's a lot in the United States there's a ton of variety you can get some very extreme color and pattern or in this case patternless phenotypes but you can also have a ton of color and pattern variety just in wild type coastals and jungles and it's endless it's truly endless and uh don't believe any of the misrepresented hype you hear about these guys being huge and mean there certainly are exceptions to the rule there are some large animals out there and there certainly are animals with really crummy attitudes but on the whole 99 percent of carpet pythons don't fit the stereotypes and I couldn't say enough positive things about these snakes there's a reason I have so many of them there's a reason why they're my favorite and uh, I hope you take some time to really give this some thought because if you're sitting at home during all this COVID time thinking oh man I need I need something new in my life I want to uh, learn a new species and you've kind of shied away from Morelia maybe now is the time so yet again herpetoculture's best kept secret the carpet python. That's all there is to it. Alrighty. I'll catch you all next week. Stay safe. And, uh, yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy your snakes. Get some carpet pythons. You'll be glad you did. I promise. Peace.